Hello, and welcome again to Quilt Chat. We're coming to you live from the AQS studio here in Paducah, Kentucky. And you know, one of the best things that we get to do is we get to handle lots of quilts, don't we? We do, especially this time of year. Uh, we get in the quilts for the Quilt Art Engagement calendar, and we've been taking pictures and enjoying looking at a lot of new quilts. Yeah. Well, and so we have two of those today. So we let's did. talk about the one behind us. And it's a quilt by Lee Legvold from Apple Valley, Minnesota. Congratulations, Lee, on getting your quilt in the calendar, first of all. That's right. Um, but it's a beautiful quilt. And so I know we each have sort of separate parts that we like a lot in this quilt. So which one do you like, Anne? Oh, I was very impressed with the stripes that the black and white stripes that are kind of hidden throughout the quilt, but that really bring an extra pop to the colors. Uh, as you'll see, the just in little uh, border edging within the blocks, there's that black and white, and it just it really adds something special. It kind of gives you a relief from all the color, it doesn't does. it? Yes. And I really love the secondary quilting design in it. That was just gorgeous how it came out. Um, making a, sec a second square. That's right. And so, um, Jessica, could you put that image up for us? There it is. It is. OK. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. All right. <laughs> I have to look to see. Uh, and it's beautiful quilting, too. And the background quilting is a lot of straight lines. But then it's got that swoopy little line that gives you a real different mm -hmm. design, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, my favorite part is the binding and the rickrack that she's included in it. She included two different colors of rickrack. Um, and I know, Betsy, you and I do that differently. So you tell them how you do it, and then I'll do mine. Um, I would take the rickrack, attach it to the quilt top, the quilted sandwich top part portion facing in, and then go ahead and add the binding and bind it to the back. So when hand. you do that, do you sew just a, a scant quarter of an inch when you sew the rickrack on? Um, I would sew the rickrack, you know, just above where I want the binding line to go. Sure. So that way I have something yes. to make sure I cover that stitching. So that's sewing it directly to the quilt. Yes. All right, now I sew it to the binding. And so the first thing you would do would be to fold the binding in half and press it good to give yourself a line. And then a line, and I've sewn just on the side of where the dip is on one side of that rickrack. And once you do that, you sew it on, and so now you have it built into your binding. Well, what you do next is that you sew this binding to the back of the quilt. So we would sew it to the back and fold it to the front, and then I would stitch in the ditch right along where the rickrack is. And you know, my machine has a couple feet that are really good for that, and I like them because they have this little blade that can go right along the edge along of the, the binding. Mm -hmm. And so this is my, um, oh shoot, this is my, blind, blind mm -hmm. hem stitch uh, foot. And then this one is the over edge foot. And it too has just a little blade that'll run right along that so you can get it. And you know, sometimes you have to tweak your needle position just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who have a machine that doesn't have either of these feet, another good foot to use is your zipper foot because you too right. can run that right along that edge and be able to stitch right in the ditch. And I love how open that is so you can see everything. The yes. Foot's right. so open. Mm -hmm. And now this quilt obviously isn't made for a child, but if I were making a child's quilt, I would do it this way because you have everything sewn down by machine. Yes. And then when you're throwing it in the washer multiple times. It's very secure. It's going to hold it very well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And so we have another beautiful we quilt. We do. We have this very beautiful... This apple. one is by Carol Bricks from Mount Morris, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And tell us what you saw in this one. It has some beautiful 25-patch um, centers in their stars. Just gorgeous. I love the tiny. I always love tiny piecing. It's so much fun. Um, and then the full design of it, where it's, you know, how they've used the neutrals and the black and contrast them with each other to create almost a one block feel to it. And you know, right now, because we have a lot of these 
uh, these types of fabrics available, mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot more of them being used in the quilts. Yeah. These are Civil War reproductions. Yes. It's just beautiful. Beautiful yes. fabric it is. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy uh, how she has done an extra amount of quilting in the black squares. So the Isn't black oh, yeah. recede and it makes the lighter colors kind of pop up. The quilting on without this is exquisite. Doing, it is. Just beautiful. Is. And different. she really did pay a lot of attention, ton of custom attention to these mm -hmm. little blocks. So Bonnie, this is one of the things I get asked a lot. When you're piecing these little teeny tiny half inch squares, they're finished size half inch. So how would you, because they're all scrappy, so there's no strip piecing here. How would you go about piecing those suckers? Well, I would strip piece it if I were going to do it, and I would do multiple sections of strips so that you get a variety of colors. And if you mix them up a little bit, sometimes you can turn it upside down, and it'll make it look like it's a totally different one. Uh, but I would strip piece it. These are half-inch finished. I would not do anything that was a half-inch and cut all those pieces. <laughs> <laughs> We're past those days. Right. And I love to take and put all of my dark ones in one basket, my light ones in the other basket, and, and grab pick, and go. Pick them up. And chain mm -hmm. piece, chain piece, chain piece, chain piece. So you yes. don't think it through too much. Try not to think at all. Just try to just grab and go. That's a good plan. And just play and then when you get past that point you do the next two sets together and you just mm -hmm. keep not paying attention and that way because if I pay any attention I'll create a pattern <laughs> right. Right. well and Sometimes Carol obviously we Carol obviously has a really good collection of the shirting type oh, fabrics those, those shirts in here are so beautiful yes. you're correct <laughs> they're really beautiful and you know you've got all these little flying geese units which yes. there's going to be a lot in this quilt and whenever you're doing something with hundreds, we've come up with something to help. Okay. So if you have hundreds or thousands of somethings to make in your quilt, we have our planning pages that we have on aqsblog.com. We've been doing this all year long, and each month we feature a new little thing to help you with. And right. so this time we did a half square triangle counter. It just so happens most of our quilts have high square triangles that we share <laughs> because it's nice for beginners, right? Right. And so each page has a little color section with 25 triangles in it. And the whole page equals 200, and you can just color them off as you go. And That's, that's a great idea. It's easy. You can just check it off. Yeah. It's great Filling when you're getting in. interrupted. Mm -hmm. None. All of my quilting is always under great interruption. So right. <laughs> I can never keep track of things. Right. Yes. I'd like to know if anybody in our audience... Uh, possibly does little squares like this by hand. Oh, I've yeah. tried that and I and I had a kind of a hard time with it because uh, just because of the, the closeness of all the seams. So if you have any hints for me, I'd really appreciate it. Well, and I think most of the hand quilt or hand piecing that's happening today is English paper piecing. A lot of it is. With yes. hexes. A lot of yes. people are well, doing hexes the hexes. Well, hexes and a lot of other shapes, too. So yes, it's, absolutely. it's a wonderful And wonderful that's thing a travel project, and it you've is. got a cute little idea to show here I today. I do. If you are heading on the road or something, I got this from uh, Mary Sorensen one time at a, at a quilt week. She took a golf tee and put a tiny magnet on the front of it so she can just simply set it down in her spool and you can just lay your, lay your needle right there. Now, uh, I did actually have a needle on there when I left today and at five <laughs> minutes before showtime, I realized the needle wasn't there so if you hear me scream when I put my hand in my purse, you'll know why. But I took a little, uh, one of these just handy Threaders. little old fashioned mm -hmm. needle threaders and you can put that on there as well. So you've got your needle threader, your needle, your spool, and really for English paper piecing, you don't need much more than that. Uh, no, little pair just try a little, little pair of trimmers <laughs> and some, some close-up readers. That's, That's right. right. Well, and, and so the other tip is is to be sure to secure your needles. It is. <laughs> if you're going to um, travel is. with it. Uh, yes, yes, put them in a, in a little uh, case. Case or, or a piece <laughs> of fabric or something right. so that you've got them. Of course. Well, that's a great tip. Well, Mary Shireman says hi. So hi, Mary Shireman. Hi, Mary. <laughs> hi, Mary. Um, all right, you know, we, we talk about food on this program. And today, Lynn Van Vactor, who is our MIS director, he makes homemade salsa. 
and today was homemade salsa day. We haven't had a chance to eat it yet, mm -hmm. uh, but we thought we'd bring it in because he makes the best, the best. homemade salsa. And so I'm, my guess is the kitchen has a bunch of uh, chips back there to go with mm -hmm. this, and, uh, mm. and you're going to share this recipe next week, right? Yes. That'll be on our newsletter, our On Point newsletter next week. So if you haven't already signed up for that, go to AmericanQuilter.com and sign up for the newsletter that comes out every single week. And we hope you'll join us next week right here, coming to you from Paducah.